So, hello Mumix. There is a book by John Lilly, the same one who wrote such books as Programming and Metaprogramming in the Human Computer, the same one who wrote Simulations of God, the same one who experimented with dolphins with the sonar and sonic equipment trying to communicate with them. He was a genius. However, today I would like to speak about something else with the remark that the book called Simulations of God, in a great shortcut, it tried to explain how every person engaged in metaphysics, religion, belief system is creating a simulation, a projection of a divinity. And uh, that is a question of projection if it is based on blind faith, interjection which is based on experiences with metaphysical entities and divinities, and then it is undergoing the process of interpretation, the Hermenean of hypophets. All religion belief systems are merely a codification of human experiences with the metaphysical, with the divinities. And it is never objectively true. Remember, just like Sakyamuni once mentioned to his disciples, doubt, doubt and see for yourself. No matter what your gurus, masters, prophets, whomsoever tells you, even if you hear voices from heavens, use your brain, be skeptical, test it, experience it, see for yourself what can be wise, what can be taken, what you may go through by yourself. Because if you want to internalize certain things, if you want to live through it yourself, you want to educate yourself, then you are living a borrowed vision. Of course, you may be inspired by your friends, by teachers, by books, by whatsoever you bring uh, on your journey. However, you must test and experience and internalize all those things, those revelations, those virtues, those sights yourself and process it with your brain. That's why we are encephalized for using our brains. Well, that's not the theology, but use your brains in order to uh, interpret and educate yourself in social sciences, strict sciences, be a critical thinker, a general scientist, and that is granted that you will interpret it in a multi-model manner and you will be better at maneuvering through certain realities, both in your human life, in your foundational life, and in your magical travails and the journeys and sojourns. So, uh, here I would like to give such an example. This is a comparative system of theologies and hierarchies between Platonic, Orphic, Chaldean, that of Iamblich, the theurgist, Proclus, uh, the disciple of Celsus and Plotinus, that was the Middle Neoplatonism, and Pseudo Dionysus, a Ropagite, who was a Christian. So let's start from the very bottom of it. Of course, I use those sources in order to procure and Latinize those, uh, these information. So let's start from the very beginning of the Platonic, to an Areton Kai Agnoston, which is that which we may not know, but it is full of certain virtues and ideas, the Protean idea of the first the uh, hyperzoion tonoeton, the mind that is divided in the uh, apera, in the nicton or the nightly epistrophe, the peras mone, the one, a deutera noete trias, this is the first division in the, for example, Jamblichian idea of the theology of arithmetics and theology of geometry. We divide it into noete zoe vel ion, and this is Vida Supra, that is see above. These are the further generations of the first uh, generatrix or proteus. So we go and go and go. As you see, it is highly complex and this is a generational system in which further worlds are revealed. And at the very last, we have the physical gods Theo. And here we may aspect this with Hellenic belief systems, 
that this is an aspecting of the world through the powers and forces. Just like in Demo Democritus, it is a whirlwind of divinities, divinity that is aspected through masks, for example, Campbellian masks of divinity. And we have plenty of gods and goddesses that are aspecting the world in greater magnitude or in greater substance or in lesser ones. So we have Thanatos, death, we have Mnemosyne, which is uh, memory, else that we see every day. This is the sanctification of life, sanctification of physical things that are metaphysicized and undergoing hypostasis, Okeanos, the eternal Okeanos, the cosmic Okeanos. You may find all the interesting things here. Selene, the Isle of the Bless, or the Moon, Astron, the stars, Ether, the cosmic Ether, uh, Ether. Mm, Athena, Nike, the victory, Apollo, or the visible sun, the Apollonic uh, reason, uh, which is uh, also aspected an aspect of the invisible sun, of Ion, of Hyperion. So we may go through all this and trying to understand it through theological perspective of the Hellens. So uh, does it mean that Zeus, for example, is throwing lightning at us? No, it was understood that the lightnings are the illuminative insights that the gods cast upon mortals in order to liberate them from the Plato's cave. This is the world of essences, philosophical essences. And the person in the catacombs, in the Plato's cave, is the person that is observing the shadows of those essences, the philosophical great hypostasis. He is merely observing signs and symbols and tokens on the cave wall. He is like physical astronomy would be people watching the reflections of the philosophical essences. They may be very, very profound, and this is necessary also to take the torch, but it is also very necessary to take this Hecatic torch and get out of this cave to find the truth of realization, both within and without. Now in the Orphic system, the god was Kronos, and the whole Christus Dia Cosmos, this is the Artemisian division, uh, for example, into the base of justice, of force. In the Egyptian belief system, the basis was Isis, and uh, the left uh, arm of the triangle was Osiris, just as the hypotenuse of the Pythagorean, Pythagorean triangle was uh, Horus, or Harpocrates. Now, Aether, Chaosmon, this is the uh, form giving uh, chaos, Phanes, or light, uh, the three nights, Uranus, the serpent that encircles, that is time, Olympus. Olympus, in the Orphic ideas from the Dervani Papyrus, is the same as time. It is not a mountain. In Kronos, Rhea, Zeus, as the Demiurgoi, Oitre Curetes, the Titans. Then we go back here. Now, in the Chaldean Neoplatonic belief system, it is based on Neoplatonism, so you may find very similar, uh, simi you may find similarities between the Platonic and Neoplatonic ideas, therefore the Chaldean uh, theurgical idea from the Chaldean oracles of Julian the Theurgist. He was a magician in the uh, army of Marcus Aurelius during the Marcomannian campaigns. He was born in Rome. Um, for example, he was the chief magician of Legio Fulminata. Okay, now uh, what do we have here? We have the paternal abyss, the unutterable oneness to Areton N, like in Plato. Patricos dia cosmos, that is divided in pater, or the transcendent fire, dynamics, hecate, as anima mundi and force, that is a suckling of this intellectual pater, and nus, the demiurgic intellect. Now these are anti-cosmic realities. They are before the Big Bang, before the world was born, the universe. Now ion vel dynamis, vide supra, this is the same, but this is the second generation. 
and Hanuate Kainuera Inges, these are the magical worlds and seals that travel throughout the universe and that communicate in Voces Mystica. Now, the Inges, they are divided into Empyrean, Aetherian and Helios, that is material, physical, the connectors that are binding everything together and safeguard the order in the universe, and the Teletarchs that, is, uh, that are representing the in the divine idea, will, power, force, and eros as an inceptive force, and receptively from the Chaldean Turgis perspective, it was faith, truth, and eros. So it was not a blind fate, but it was a reasonable fate based on argumentation and philosophical ideas, as well as prime experience with the autophaneia of those divinities, both in fire and in the hecatic terrifying form of the abyss. Now we further go to Kronos and Rhea, Ion and Time, lower Hecate as the membrane between the teletarchic worlds, that is a division, Hecateon, the goddess of the crosswords, uh, cross, crossroads. And uh, she is like an engirdling, she's engirdling, engirdled by snakes, or Ouroboros. That gives an idea of a, a girl with a sword and gut mm, from one whom? The one who was responsible for the Babylon project. Parsons, of course. Now, let's go to hypercosmic gods in Azonoi that were above, and here we encounter the material world, the world of the elements, Hooray, the manifestation, the universe came into being, the, uh, the Big Bang or the beginning of the world unveiled itself in all the things previously mentioned. That means that divinity is present everywhere. It is like a sphere upon sphere upon sphere, like an egg. Okay, here we move to the closer things and far remote, the planetary gods, the Zonai, the Archons. Uh, that means that every planet in the solar system, be it Jupiter or Mars, has a nature and a very complex nature and a hypostasis, that is, the Archon is the nature of a given planet, with all the intelligences and spirits and beings that are ethereally pertaining to its zone. And of course, it is reference to give justice to all the exoplanets in other solar systems, and it would be clear in such a manner. Then Angelibonum, Agathos Daimones, and Heroes, this is a class. Of course, all hierarchies and models may be useful, but they are wrong. This is for the purpose of understanding it. And in Jamblik, the classes were uh, discerned by the uh, by the commonly shared features, not by some up and down, left and right, okay? And at the very bottom we have men and animals. A man is a broken animal, as Nietzsche once wrote. And a man that to was torn from the participation mystique as a, as a monkey man was terrified, he started symbolizing and started discovering, making little tools, developing civilizations, and then the light of order all of a sudden started to organize his perceptions and the civilization that he created, the order that he created, be it an Egyptian, a Sumerian civilization, was that he started discovering divinities. He was taken away from the cave, torn from nature, and divinity hence was discovered, not invented. All right, no Yamblichus. Uh, these are probably just like the Chaldean ones, because he was a follower and he was a theologist working with the uh, Chaldean oracles. But here we have a difference. We have hypercosmic gods, liberated gods that are not incarnated in human animals or any form of, uh, let's say, liberated from the samsara cycle. 
and cosmic gods, these stellar gods, planetary gods, celestial archons, yes, they age too, they may exist for millions of years, but they change, they are mutable, and they may perish in the end. So sublunar gods and archons, so angels, archangels, daimonions, heroes, and purified souls. As we see, daimonions are above the purified souls and above mortals and men. And it is meant by Agathos daimons, the, let's say, Kako daimons, are a shortcut of ktonic, very combustible, chaotic demons. They were called the dogs of Hecate, and they too have a function in this whole picture. Now, let's uh, go to Proclus. This is one limited, uh, infinite, mixed, like the Proteus of Egypt. Egypt. Uh, then it is almost the same, the uh, intelligible intellective triads. Here we have intellective triads of Cronus Realizius, the Curetes, uh, like for example the ones in Mithraic Mysteries, the Cautes and Cautopates holding the flames are the Curetes. Separating monad, then we have the Murgic triad Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, Poseidon as the extent of the universe, the waters of the universe, and Hades both as a sublunar uh, space and everything that is related to the uh, infinite uh, voids and chaos as well. Mm, no, so Artemis, Persephone, Athena. Artemis was also associated with Hecate, often wise. Persephone or Proserpina, the underworld uh, goddess, and Athena, the wisdom, the justice, and the, uh, let's say, battle of philosophers. So, and after moving from these aspects of godhood, then again, we end up in the material world, the elemental world, and here we have the gods of uh, planets of the solar system, Kronos, Zeus, Ares, Helios, Aphrodite, Hermes, Selene. The, these are the archons of natures of the planets. Of course, there are also gods and goddesses associated with those planets and intelligences. Uh, chains and angels, archangels, daimonians, heroes, purified souls that belong to those zones. All right. Uh, and what happened here? Well, Christianity happened and all of these complexities of the hidden theologies of Helen Nobilitas theologies were reduced to the world God. God is simulated by Judeo-Christians. What is God? And if you ask them, well, that is God. They, they have no answer. They may speculate about it, give it names. And here, God, again, we have a complex, robust theological system, and it is reduced to God. Okay, here, Pseudo-Dionysus invented that the hypercosmic gods are called Seraphim, the great fiery creatures of the island of the ter Teretarchic world and below, as Seraphims. Most likely, a certain Jewish person might witness an autophania of a Seraphim, but his belief systems made, it, uh, made him go all crazy. And they don't talk, they don't say if you're not. No. Then, thrones and dominions. What else he assigned here? The principalities, authorities, and here to the Angelibonum archangels and angels. And he didn't know what to put here, so he just put saints. And then there are mortals, human above animals, which is, well, not found in other systems. We are also a part of the animal world but we may redefine ourselves, the rectification of spirits. And a fox spirit may rectify itself too. So animals have their own participation in it. They have their souls. Otherwise, it will be a contradiction. Gods don't contradict nature. Nature has its own laws. Mortals make their own laws. 
and gods have their own laws, but they don't contradict each other. It is by the human capacity to intellectualize and symbolize that they may contradict the whole order with the ideas. However, let's leave it like that because I'm not a universalist and definitely not a moralist. And at the last idea, I would be a Manichaean of good and evil, light and darkness. I prefer harmonies. I see everything as a harmony. So, uh, thank you. Have fun. And may your epitomizations into great beings happen. <laughs>